Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Laugh. It's got another video for you guys today. You guys are all doing well. We got in another MacBook from one of you guys out there, and this is the A2485. This is 16 inch 2021 uh, MacBook Pro. It's the one with the M1 Pro chip, and it's in here for repair. So if you guys didn't already know, um, we're located right outside of Washington DC in Northern Virginia in Alexandria, pretty close to Arlington. And we take walk-ins as well as mail -in repairs. If you guys are interested in doing a mail -in repair with us, uh, we have all the links in the description down below for you guys to mail in your MacBook for us to help you out with. So today uh, we have one of these in here and it's just not powering on. Um, he went to the Apple store and they said they pretty much need to replace the board. So we don't want to replace the board, we want to fix it, right? And we can first test with this, this is our USB-C tester. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna check how the MacBook is taking in uh, voltage from an outlet, right? And we're gonna see how it's gonna work. So it's gonna tell us a lot of stuff that we need to know um, before working on it, but it's pretty obvious to tell if there's a board problem just by plugging this in. So we see we have five volts and it's about, uh, the current's very low, it's about 0 0.20, which is very low. Let's see if we switch this one, because sometimes it can tell us something different if we switch the ports and uh, about the same. So let's open up and take a look. See if we notice anything. Oh, well, it looks pretty clean there. I do see a stain over here, and I believe that's for the power button. It looks pretty good for the most part. So let's go ahead, open it up further, take a look. Okay, so we've removed it, and we got the board out over there to the microscope and take a look further. So let's go ahead and do that. We're just gonna do a visual inspection of the rest of the board to see. So we have some corrosion over there, so we got a liquid spill sure so we'll remember that it doesn't look too bad clean it up a little bit it's very very light very minor I don't even know if it really necessarily needs anything now what I did notice is something I did not like and here is one of uh, the USB-C connections this was on the far right side that was the same side that that had the power button and touch ID that looked a little bit nasty but this um, looks like it's burned there completely and this is a liquid damage not too bad in the back but we have some trace damage on the front of it here so since we saw that damage um, that makes me think maybe there's something else going on right maybe with the USB-C circuit because when you have that amount of damage being plugged into the area over here um, there is a circuit that goes behind that and if you keep plugging in with liquid damage you can damage that circuit not just the port and then eventually it's just going to shut off, right? Or not charge. Now the thing is, you're wondering, well, if I damage it over here, how does it impact the rest of them? Well, for each one of these USB-C ports, we have there's a big chip right in the middle there. That is your Texas instrument, it's your CD32. And there are one for every single USB-C port. And a USB-C port is also considered a MagSafe as far as the circuit goes. So they all have to be working for um, power on for any of this, this device. So even if you have one bad one, you can't just ignore it, you have to make sure it works. Port is right here. Unless you see anything obvious here, we can assume that this gets damaged. And this is the USB-C IC for that area. So imagine this being plugged in and over and over again, most likely the circuit dies. And when that dies, this usually fails most of the time because you have it. And it might not be something that's very evident that you can see, but maybe internally it's damaged. You see about five volts, so you have a short somewhere and that's a pretty obvious one to, to do because we have uh, information to go off of, right? So that's probably gonna damage that chip inside. Let me take it up. Oops, I think I've knocked one. It's okay, we can put that one right back. So. There we go, it's all better.
So for this, we cannot just buy a CD32 and then replace it. We need to be very, very specific. And why that is, let me go ahead and show you. So we're, we have our board view up. We will see the area, and this is your UG400, which is your big CD32 chip. You can see all the connections on the bottom. However, if we go to the other side, we might see a very similar CD32 chip, which is your CD3217B12. But if we look on the other side, we see the U5500. We also see the UF400. And then we also see the UF500. So why do you even care? Well, it matters for this because when you do a replacement, it's not like previous models as you can just buy a replacement, just put it in there and it all works. Easy, right? Nope. These ones work a little bit differently. On newer Macs, especially on an Apple Silicon models, these CD3217B12s have firmware and are programmed. They need to communicate with each other and they need to be very specific when you do a replacement. There are different ways you can get replacements. You can either find one that you need to make sure is pre-programmed. You can buy the chip and get a very specific tool to program this. If you have a donor board, you would need to have the same side, which has the same, in this case, this is a UG400. You can go ahead and remove it. Now, the problem is when you remove it from um, a donor board, you can't just easily put it back. As the connection, as we just showed, is located underneath the chip, and that requires to put the solder back on in a process called reballing. Stay tuned in future videos where you'll see us uh, do the reballing because all these newer Macs are going to require it anyway, and we might as well show you guys because it's more fun. We do have a pre programmed one, and we're going to go ahead and put it in there, and everything should work. So let's plug it in. We see we're getting our 20 volts. Oh, and there's the Apple logo, powered on. And we can see that the battery's charging. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on doing a repair for the A2485 um, 16 inch 2021 MacBook Pro with a nice CD3217B12 problem. If you guys are interested in sending in your MacBook for us to do repair, we have all links in the description down below on how you can send in your device via a nice mail-in option. And we would love to take a look at the device for you. Uh, we offer data recovery services as well as repairs. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, found it informative, and see you guys next video. Thanks a lot for watching guys, take care.